more than five months after the first confirmed coronavirus illness in this country, cases are surging again to record levels. There were more than 38,000 cases reported yesterday. That's according to the COVID tracking project. Now that surpasses the previous high of about 36,000 back in April. The three most populated U.S. states, California, Florida, and Texas, all reported record daily cases. In Texas, hospitalizations have hit record highs for 13 straight days. In that state's biggest city of Houston, 97% of ICU beds are occupied at Texas Medical Center, which is billed as the largest medical complex in the world. Officials there say if trends continue, the center could become overwhelmed. And with all that in mind, let's get to our Dr. David Agus, who joins us from Los Angeles now. Uh, Dr. Agus, good morning. There's a lot to get to. I, I want to begin with these dramatic numbers, the surge in cases. We knew we would expect little spikes as states reopened. This doesn't seem little. What concerns you most about it? You're right, Tony. Um, th this is, you know, inning one, when we were all stayed at home, we knew what to do. We knew we had to stay at home, and we all did what we were supposed to do. And the case rate in the United States fell pretty dramatically. But inning two, where the rules are different all over the place, we don't know what to do. And I think we're seeing that. And we're seeing particularly young people go out and go back to the way they were. So they're not going down a level, going out with masks and social distancing. They're going back to the way they were. They said, you know, it's not going to affect me dramatically. I can't handle this. I have to go back. And then they come and they could spread to others. So this spread, these number increases are scary. And obviously, we're seeing it like the report in Texas, yeah. where the hospitals are overwhelmed. Why is it that we have this double-digit increase nationally in cases, but the death count is declining, the two-week averages in the number of fatalities on the way down? Why the lag? Well, because we have an age drift downwards. Um, you, you know, United States is 4% of the global population, yet 25% of the deaths and cases of COVID-19 in the world. We're seeing this increase in cases now in the United States, but the younger people, they're hospitalized, many of them, but they're not going to an ICU as much and not obviously dying as much. So the death rate is staying stable, but this is still worrisome because they could spread the virus. And then it's these asymptomatic people that really worry me because they could spread to others without knowing it. And so when cases are up, the numbers of cases are spreading are growing. And it's uh, scary right now in this country. Yeah. Yeah, you mentioned some new rules. One that comes to mind is New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut uh, imposing a two-week quarantine on visitors from uh, states that are seeing a surge. Will that be effective? And then bigger picture, are these states with a surge likely to need a lockdown to get it under control? Well, we saw it the other way a few months ago, right? You couldn't go from Florida to New York, and now you can't go from New York. I mean, you, couldn't, uh, you can't go from New York to Florida. I'm saying it backwards. We saw it in the old days is that you couldn't have gone from New York to Florida. Now you can't go from Florida to New York. So, yeah, I think that they have to do this, is that there are places in the country where there are very high numbers of cases and they have to, in a sense, be on lockdown. And other states are going to say, I don't want people from that state coming into my state. And we're all going to start to protect each other. You know, states with different rules makes it very confusing. We don't have national leadership on what to do. It's all at the local level. And that makes it difficult because you don't know exactly what the rules are. Yeah, the united part of the United States seems to be missing from the, the public health response. But we have heard from President Trump, who yesterday teased what he called a beautiful surprise on the vaccine front. Do you have any idea what he's talking about? <laughs> um, I'm not always quite sure I understand what he's talking about, but I can say is that the results on the vaccines look very promising in that right now thousands of patients have been vaccinated. There have yet to be significant side effects. And what I think is encouraging is that almost everyone is having an immune response. Realize that the vaccine is going to be a little different, I think, than what was originally billed. It may be two shots. So one shot on day zero, another shot three weeks later. And then we'll see how long the vaccine lasts. So my gut is there will be a vaccine here in the fall and we're going to start to vaccinate the country. So having light at the end of the tunnel, I think is very positive. And hopefully that will enable all of us to say, just a couple more months of hunkering down and doing a change in behavior, because in the end, yeah. we're gonna get back to a new normal, but we will get back to a way of life that we're more comfortable.
Yeah, wow, the fall sounds like a, a timetable a lot of people would be rooting for. Uh, Dr. David Agus, thank you very much. Much appreciated.